Hey guys, today I'm going to be looking at some of K-Lion's base effects. So initially, they came into contact with me and I wanted to try out their base preamp, uh, the wine cellar, because it was just a cool DI box and seeming affordable, and I'm trying to find affordable replacements for a sans amp for people that ask about my tone and don't want to shell out the money. That was the plan, and I asked them to just send me that. And then when I went to my mail, I got this entire box of base pedals from K-Lion. So I haven't actually tried any of them out yet, but I just wanted to open them on camera and just give you my initial thoughts of all of these pedals. Big thanks to K-Line for sending me these pedals. It's surreal to see all these pedals in one box. I've never gotten this many sent to me at once. So let's go try them out. Okay, so this is the K-Line Wine Cellar driver and DI box for bass. I saw a video of it um, back on YouTube on Bass the World and it looked like an amazing bass driver pedal. Again, like I said in the beginning of the video, a lot of people ask about my tone and I always recommend the Sans Amp, but not everyone wants to shell out $200. So let's go ahead and see if this is a killer preamp for 40 bucks. <laughs> So this was the wine cellar overall. Um, pretty satisfied with it for $40. It's got a DI out, which you really don't find on affordable pedals like this. And it can get some good gritty tones and it didn't sound like a too cheap of a preamp. It doesn't like have the quality of a Sans amp or something. But overall it's pretty dang good quality. I got some great like punk rock tones out of it. I can't complain. I might sell my uh, BT bass DI and just use this because it can still get those gritty bass tones. So yeah, overall really satisfied with this. Um, hopefully the other pedals have the same type of quality or sound as this. Um, we'll go ahead and find out. So the next pedal I want to use is another DI. So this is the Press Pass bass driver. I didn't even know they made a second bass driver. I thought that was pretty interesting. They have two. We'll see how this compares to the wine cellar. <laughs> So this is the Press Pass. Oh, it's a really cool DI. Um, again, another DI. It's like, I think 40 bucks. It has a mid control, which the wine cellar does not have. The volume knob was a little better on this one. I actually got volume if I cranked it up. I felt like on the wine cellar, I didn't get much volume unless I put up the gain and the harmonics. Pretty cool power overall, but I guess I can't really get the rock tones I want out of it. So I'd have to go with the wine cellar. I really like having the mix and the harmonics on this. So I'm actually gonna keep using this uh, DI for the rest of the video for my clean sound, and then we're gonna look at some more pedals. All right, next pedal is the Pressure Point Bass Compressor. So I've been looking for an affordable bass compressor. Um, there's not too many on the market. I mean, there's a lot of affordable compressors, but not bass compressors. This is the Pressure Point. It's got the cool little crab art on it. So I'm excited to try it out.
So this is the pressure point base compressor again. Overall, it was a pretty solid base compression pedal. I realize how important base compression is playing without the compressor on that slap part. Uh, the sound levels were all over the place. As the attack and sensitivity, the attack is really strong even in the like the middle settings. I'm surprised how quickly um, it activated even only having it like a little halfway up. So overall, pretty cool compressor, can't complain. Um, obviously it doesn't compare to like an MXR based compressor at the price point, so um, it's pretty cool. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to keep the K-Line wine cellar and the base compressors in my signal, as well as uh, the K-Line power. So the next pedal I wanna show is the Widow Bass Overdrive. One of my favorite um, effects is Bass Overdrive. Um, there's just so many different options for overdrive in general, since you can also go to guitars for overdrive. So let's see how K-Line did on their bass compressor, bass overdrive. So this was the Widow Bass Overdrive. I know the cool paint job, I gotta say I love the aesthetic of all these pedals and the paint jobs and the names. This overdrive really uh, didn't do it for me. Um, it did the low gain settings okay, but when you turn up the gain, it turned really fizzy. Um, there's really no punch or definition. Definitely not what I'm looking for in bass overdrives. When it comes to affordable bass overdrives, I'll have to keep looking. The next one is the Faux Hammer Bass Fuzz. I gotta say, these pedals are just so aesthetically pleasing. So let's just go ahead and try this fuzz out. that had the fuzz control, the volume, and a boost. I tried using the boost, but um, like my signal was kind of cutting out or I was just doing these weird things. But overall, not a great fuzz. Um, seems like the bass overdrive and the fuzz are kind of a miss, but um, the DIs and the compression, and so far the power supply have all been fantastic. That's okay, you can't hit them all. <laughs> All right, so the next bass effects pedal I have is their bass auto wah here. I don't really mess around with wah pedals. I'm just gonna have to experiment and see what I can come up with. tell by the demo I didn't really know what to do with the bass auto wah. It's definitely something you find with a uh, guitar slot using a wah effect. It's a pretty cool pedal. The pedal's called the Rivet, <laughs> so these names are pretty interesting. And um, I had a lot of fun with it. And um, there's definitely some songs like I could use a wah. I uh, cover Mad Visions by Royal Bloods. Like, I definitely needed a wah and I didn't have it. So it'll be cool to have around a mesh pedal, but I like it. All right, so we're on to the last effect. This is a bass EQ. It doesn't have any funky name, but it still has um, an awesome paint job, aesthetically pleasing. So uh, let's check out this EQ. So bass EQ, it's not a pedal I really mess around with. Overall, I don't really use EQ that much. Um, I know it's definitely useful if you're, you want to use like a guitar distortion and it just sucks out the low end, uh, you can definitely use an EQ pedal alongside that. Or if you just want to like boost or reduce your mid frequencies, um, I know some people use a bass EQ for that. This EQ seems fine for the most part. I don't own an EQ pedal, so it's hard to compare. Wish I had more control of the mid frequencies on this. Um, I only have the 500 and the 1K knobs on it. Um, if you look at something like the Boss Bass EQ, um, has a lot more mid frequencies that you can mess around with. But overall, it's still a pretty good bass EQ, considering it's a portable one. No complaints.
So again, big shout out to Kayline for sending me all these pedals. I've never had this many pedals sent out to me before and it was, uh, it was a surreal experience. So in the comments, just let me know what your favorite pedal was. And then also let me know if you want any individual demos um, of the pedals and I can probably make just like my standard two minute demo for some of these pedals. All right, thanks.